Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a newly discovered Windows forensic artifact, which is not something that happens that often. In this case, it's a program execution artifact added in Windows 11 Pro version 22H2. It was originally discovered by Lucas Gonzalez in late December 2022, and then documented in this blog post by Andrew Rathbun and Lucas in early January 2023. As you can see, this artifact stems from a recent update to the Program Compatibility Assistant, or PCA, which has been around since the Windows 8 days. If that Windows component sounds familiar, you're probably thinking of AmCache, which is closely related to this artifact. As always, let's start by taking a look at the Arta facts for this artifact, and then we'll check it out in a demo. As I mentioned, this was introduced in Windows 11 22H2 as part of an update to PCA. It's an artifact of execution for GUI-based programs. It's located in percent system root percent, which of course is typically C colon slash Windows, under app compat PCA. The three files of interest in this location will be PCA app launch DIC, which I assume stands for dictionary, dot text, PCA General DB0 dot text and PCA General DB1 dot text. The PCA app launch DIC dot text is the primary file of interest and it tracks the full path of the binary that was executed along with the last execution time in UTC. This information is delimited by a pipe character. PCA General DBX, where X is either zero or one, also utilizes a pipe delimited format and tracks the following fields. In order, it's execution time, run status, executable path, file description, software vendor, file version, AMCache program ID, and exit code. Notice I said AMCache program ID, so there is a correlation between this artifact and AMCache. You'll also note that similar information is tracked in the Windows Event Log Microsoft Windows Application Experience slash Program Compatibility Assistant within Event ID 17. Now that is not a new event log, it's been around for a while, and it just so happens that some of the information here is similar. I haven't done exhaustive testing to see if there is a one-for-one -one match between these two, but just know that there may be information there. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop over to a Windows 11 box and take a look at a demo. All right, you'll notice that I'm using WSL2 for the demo, but of course you could just as easily do this in cmd.exe or PowerShell. Let's start by changing into the directory in which this artifact is located, which of course is under Windows App Compat PCA. So once I've changed into this location, let's do a directory listing and here you see the three files that we covered during the Arta effects, starting with the most important PCA app launch DIC dot text. Then we have PCA general DB zero dot text and PCA general DB one dot text. Note that the DB one file has a zero byte size and has not been updated. That was the case on other systems on which I tested as well. However, in reading the about DFIR.com article, I noticed that it was said that this file was updated in other testing. So your results may vary here. It's a little unclear as to in what circumstance the DB0 or the DB1 would be updated. Let's go ahead and start with that most important file though and just cat it out. So what I'm going to do is cat this and pipe it through more so it doesn't spill off the screen. And this is pretty self-explanatory. All we have is the full path to a binary, like in this case, powertoys.exe. We have a pipe delimiter, and then we have a last execution timestamp in UTC. So again, the key takeaway here is the last execution timestamp, which means each time we subsequently run a binary, it should update this timestamp to reflect the last time it executed. It is in UTC already, which is the only time zone we should be using in forensics. And as an important reminder, it is for GUI based programs. However, I will show you a little caveat to that when we get to the latter part of the demo here. But again, very self-explanatory. We'll pick another one like VLC. So again, here's the full path to VLC.exe, a pipe delimiter, and then the last execution timestamp in UTC. Very easy. And once we execute some programs, we will check to ensure that it updates as I said it did. You don't have to take my word for it. All right, next up, let's go ahead and cat out PCA general db0.txt 
And here, there are a lot more fields that could be populated. Notice in some of these, you just have pipes with nothing in between, which means the fields are not populated. But let's pick on one that is. Uh, let's see, how about Windows Terminal here? So starting with the first value, this should be pretty obvious. It is a timestamp. So after the run timestamp here, we have a run status. We have the full path to the binary itself, which is very long in this case. It ends with open console.exe. Then we have a description of what the file is. In this case, it's Windows, and then it wraps over here, terminal, Windows terminal. Then we have the software vendor, which is Microsoft Corporation, the file version, which is 1.14 point blah, blah, blah. Then we have this value here, which looks like a hash, but as we said in the artifacts, this is not a hash. This is actually the program ID, which can be matched up with AMCache to kind of marry together these two artifacts to get even more information. So that's a key concept to be aware of. And then of course you have the exit value, the exit code value, which in this case says abnormal process exit with code hex 6D. And if you take a look at the screen, most of these actually say something about an abnormal process exit or an installer failed message or something along those lines. And in my testing, that has been the case for most of the things that have been tracked in this file. But if I'm looking for example, evil.exe on a system, I'm certainly going to search this file as well, not just the first file we looked at, but this one as well, because there may be additional information that I could glean about evil.exe from this. And of course, even more so by marrying up this artifact with AMCache using that program ID value that we talked about right here. All right, without out of the way now, let's go ahead and take a look at the timestamps. And as you can see, 1707, 1704 were our last updated timestamps as I'm recording this. Let's go ahead and now minimize this and launch some programs. So I have my tools folder pulled up here in Windows Explorer. And let's go ahead into Arsenal Recon, Arsenal Image Mounter, and let's launch Arsenal Image Mounter. Not because we necessarily need to use it. In this case, I just need a GUI based program to launch and there it is. So let's go ahead and close it. Now let's go ahead and launch a couple of other ones. Uh, let's see, how about under miscellaneous, we'll launch thumb cache viewer and we'll launch thumbs viewer. All right, so both of those are launched. And by the way, if you're not familiar with these tools, there's an upcoming 13 cubed episode covering them that you should check out. And then lastly, just to kind of prove a point, let's go into Chainsaw. Chainsaw is not a GUI based tool, right? It's a command line tool. And if I double click this, it's obviously not gonna do anything. It's gonna pop up a command window for less than a second and immediately exit, but I'll do it anyway. So there we go. I just ran it and it immediately exited because it's expecting me to provide it with some parameters at the command line. But in this case, I'm not running it from the command line. I'm running it from the GUI, from Windows Explorer. So keep that in mind because what may happen is something that you don't expect to happen. It should be populated, keyword should, within this artifact. Even though it's a command line tool, it should be populated because I ran it from the GUI, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We're doing this live after all. Okay, so let's go back to Windows Terminal and let's do another directory listing and check it out. Both of these timestamps have been updated to 1713 as I'm recording this. So clearly something was modified in these files. Let's go ahead and cat PCA app launch DIC.txt and let's grep 2023-0104, which is today's date as I'm recording this. And you'll notice that we have several different matches and check it out at the very bottom, there's chainsaw.exe, a command line utility, but we ran it from the GUI and it is in fact populated right here. If I run it from the command line, it's not actually going to update this timestamp. I promise you, you can test it. But if I ran it from the GUI again, it would again update this last execution timestamp. But there's that, and you can see the 22, 13, 18 UTC timestamp. And then shortly before that, you can see Thumbs Viewer right here. Then you can see Thumb Cache Viewer before that. And then you can see Arsenal Image Mounter before that, which was the first thing that we ran. So all of those are there and that does track. And the other things that you see here, such as OBS, which I'm using to record this, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, all of these things I have indeed launched today on this machine. And if I launch any of these other programs again, it's going to update that last execution timestamp or if it doesn't exist, it will populate the full path to that binary in this file along with 
In this case, it would be the first execution timestamp, right? And then every time I subsequently launch it, it should, in theory, be updated. So pretty self-explanatory and easy to understand. Let's go ahead and cat out the other file here, the PCA general db 0txt And you'll notice that, for example, here at the very bottom, conveniently, is the last thing, which mentions chainsaw. Notice that a lot of the different fields here are not populated. It looks like the program ID field is populated, but notice it says abnormal process exit, which is in fact true because it didn't get the expected input, right? It's expecting parameters of some kind to enter. So it's interesting that it did track it in this file as abnormal process exit. Uh, here's Arsenal Image Mounter, interestingly, which says installer failed. Now I have no idea why this is tracked as installer failed. It was already installed. The driver for AIM is already up and running on the system and it's been used multiple times. So I don't know why it's been logged as a status or a runtime of installer failed. So that's interesting. Again, if you know, please leave a comment in the description below. After all, this is a very, very new artifact. So there are a lot of things that we potentially don't know about it but I just wanted to point that out. All right, so just to recap, there are our three files. The main file of interest that we just saw was PCA app launch DIC.txt. That's the one that's super easy. It's got the full path to the binary uh, and the last execution timestamp. So pretty self-explanatory. All right, that has been a quick look at this new PCA evidence of execution artifact. And I hope this is something that you find useful. I know that there's not a whole lot of Windows 11 22H2 systems out there in the wild that you're necessarily going to be forensicating, but of course the time will come where that is the case and this artifact may indeed pay dividends later down the road, assuming it doesn't get changed or removed in some way. And that wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this 13 cubed episode. Check out the aboutdfir.com article, which will be linked in the description. And if you learn more about this artifact, please do leave a comment down below telling us what you've learned. If it's something significant, maybe I'll make a follow-up episode for this. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.